Hi, I'm Bill Mould, and this video is about e-bike wheel nipple spoke articulation angles. There's a lot of detail in this, so allow yourself a little extra time to try to absorb it. Let's look at a typical 36 spoke wheel. We're looking here at a rim with a bead seat diameter of 559 millimeters and an ERD of 570 millimeters. We have a whole flange diameter of 45 millimeters. These are the nipples, uh, 18 of them on the drive side. And here in black we have the radius of the wheel and with a three-quarters pattern we're going to have a nice convenient nice small angle with respect to the radius of only four degrees. Now here is a 36 spoke wheel with a big motor in it. And if we look here we find that we have some pretty bad looking angles between the nipple and the departure angle of the spoke. You can see here the red line representing the radius of the wheel and one of the uh, spokes off at a 12 degree angle which is not terrible but is certainly not great either. Here is our bead seat diameter of 559 millimeters. If we had a normal size hub, we might see something like this. But we don't have a normal size hub, we have a big motor. With a flange diameter of a whopping 170 millimeters. So if we compare our wheel with a normal hub, with what it would look like with a motor hub of 170 millimeters. We have quite a different picture and we're going to look at what some of these wheels would look like with articulation angles and crossings of three cross, two cross, and one cross. Here is our wheel with a three cross. We see in purple the pulling spokes and in green the so-called pushing spokes. This dashed line here represents the radius, this angle theta, in this case is a very large 17 degree angle between the radius and a three cross spoke. Now that red line there represents the radius of the circle. If I have a certain amount of tension on the spoke, if I put a force on that lever arm in the clockwise direction, then I will generate some torque. Our torque in the clockwise direction is the length of the lever arm, which is that vertical red line, which is the radius of the whole flange circle, times the spoke tension increase, times the sine of 17 degrees. Now, I might like that torque picture, but I don't want to have to live with that 17 degree angle of one of the spokes. Here is what the wheel looks like with a two cross. We extend our spoke with that dashed line, put in our lever arm. This is the effective whole flange circle angle of 14 degrees and here is the force on my lever arm to generate torque. That part of the picture looks pretty good but I still have an unacceptable angle of 14 degrees for the spoke. So here is my picture with a one cross. With my one cross, I still have a pretty acceptable picture of the lever arm, which is twice as long as it would be with a normal non-motor hub. But here I have a very acceptable 
9-degree spoke angle. Now let's just compare and see what things look like if we use a larger rim. So we're going to see the same picture for the hub, but a bead seat diameter of 622 millimeters and an ERD of 630. With a 3-cross, I still have a pretty large angle, 15 degrees. A 2-cross of 13 degrees. And a 1-cross of a nice comfortable 7 degrees. Now, showing my angles a little differently on the right-hand side instead of the left, the wheel to your left is the 26-inch wheel, and then on the right is the 700C wheel. And we can see that going from the smaller to a larger rim does not make a big difference in the size of the angles. Now, I have recently discovered this wonderful company, Grin Technologies in British Columbia and Canada, and they evidently specialize in e-bike wheels on their website has some really good information and some good calculators. There are a number of variables that you can set and I'm going to highlight here these, the flange diameter, the number of spokes, the nominal diameter which would be for example a 24 inch, 26, 20, uh, 650B and so on wheel the ERD, and then the cross pattern. So this would be an example of some of the settings. A wheel that has a flange diameter in the hub of 232 millimeters, 36 spokes, a nominal diameter for a 26 inch, uh, for a 24 inch wheel, an ERD of 474 millimeters, and a cross pattern of one. Here is a close-up of just the wheel part. So I can put in this red dashed line which represents the radius of the wheel and that angle there is then 17 degrees. 17 degrees is the complement of 73, obviously both of them adding up to 90 degrees for the right triangle that I have at the top. Back to my 700C wheel with a motor hub in it with a hub flange diameter of 170 millimeters. With a two cross I have an angle that I think is still unacceptable of 13 degrees. But over on the left, I have a nice relaxed angle of 7 degrees for my one cross. And here I see my effective lever arms and torque angles. Now, let's ask this question. How much smaller must my hub flange be to get the two cross articulation angle to less than 10 degrees. We go from this to this. So my flange diameter for that to happen can be no more than 134 millimeters. This is one of the supposed truisms of wheel builders. Wheels that have to transfer torque cannot be radially laced on both sides. That is normally true, but there are exceptions. These are a few exceptions. If you have a relatively small diameter rim and a really big hub, then you have no choice but to lace the wheel radially. It's not ideal, but it works. In these wheels, even a one cross would give you unacceptable angles. Now we're going to make a table and pull some information down from the uh, Grin website calculator. But columns here are going to be ERD in millimeters, cross, number of crossings, 
the hole flange diameter in millimeters, the angle, and the ratio of the ERD to the hole flange diameter, and the length of the spokes in millimeters. For example, if I have a 622 millimeter rim, I'm assuming that the ERD and the bead seat diameter are the same for simplification. For a rim with no appreciable depth, that's a, a reasonable assumption. So I have an ERD of 622 millimeters, and if I use a two cross with a hub flange diameter of 195 millimeters, I'm going to have an angle between the radius and the spoke of an unacceptable 15 degrees. If the first two columns are the same, but I have a smaller hub with a hub flange diameter of 169 millimeters, then I have an angle of 12.5 degrees. Continuing, uh, if I have a hub flange diameter of only 140 millimeters, then my angle is down to 10 degrees. But if my hub flange diameter decreases to only 109 millimeters, then my angle looks pretty good at only 7.5 degrees. So I can easily compare my hub flange diameter column with my angle column and maybe begin to draw some conclusions as to what is acceptable and what is not. An angle of 15 degrees is unacceptable, so we'll enclose that in red. The yellow line is a caution line. 12.5 degrees is, is not very good, but it's starting to become closer to being acceptable. Our light green is good, and dark green is very good. And we can fill in the uh, rest of the column. I wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to the length of the spokes because that's not a hard calculation to make anyway. But look at the fifth column, the ratio of the ERD to the whole flange diameter. It only becomes acceptable if the ratio is 4.4 or higher. Now we're going to look at the same data, except here we're going to do a one cross. We still have the same pattern of red to yellow to light green to dark green. If I look at the data here and I compare the dark green two cross to the dark green one cross, it's clear that with the, the one cross, I can have a much larger whole flange diameter hub. 175 millimeters compared to 109 and still have a nice acceptable 7.5 degree angle. In the same way we'll see the same kind of trend if we compare two cross patterns with a 559 millimeter ERD with the same hub and rim laced up as a one cross. Looking again at the green blocks for a 559, a 2 cross, and a 1 cross, with a 1 cross, I can have an acceptable angle with a larger whole flange diameter hub. And on we go here to a ERD of 507 millimeters. The same comparison of a 2 cross and a 1 cross. And getting really small with a 406. And then finishing that out, we get the same pattern. Now, we obviously can't ignore ERD. So if we look at these two graphs here, they are exactly the same dimensions, except for the fact that the one on the right has a smaller ERD because of the fact that it is a deeper section rim. So we find that everything else being the same, the smaller ERD or the deeper amount of section of the rim causes a larger articulation angle. So trying to put a hub with a big motor into a rim with a significant amount of depth in it, probably a deep section carbon rim, is not going to work. Even for a one cross. 
In this comparison here, we see that our wheel on the left with a big motor in it, but a small diameter is not going to work. So on the right, the only choice is going to be radial. From the very basics about the number of spokes and crossing patterns, we get the following. The minimum number of spokes for X crossings, where X is an integer, 1, 2, 3, or 4, is X times 9 rounded up to a multiple of 4. So if I have 36 spokes in the wheel, I can do a 4 cross, but I'd probably do a 3 cross. With 32 spokes, the standard would be a 3 cross. With 24 spokes, a 2 cross. Which leaves the case of 28 spokes. I can do a 3 cross. I can do a 2 cross. I would suggest to you that in most cases with 28 spokes, a 3 cross is going to be best. So let's draw some conclusions for wheels with motor hubs in them. Keep articulation angles less than 10 degrees and a lot less than 10 degrees if you can. If you're going to be using a one cross, the ratio of the ERD to the whole flange diameter should be equal to or greater than three. If you're lacing with a two cross, then your ratio of ERD to whole flange diameter should be equal to or greater than five. And for hub motor e-bike wheels, usually you want to lace them with a one cross. And lastly, familiarize yourself with this GRIN calculator. It's one of the really cool things I've run across recently. Here's my contact information. Thank you for watching, and I sincerely hope you will contact me directly if you have any questions or comments.